hearts of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Today is the fourth Sunday of the Blessed Month of Tuba. In this month, we've been focusing on salvation through baptism, this washing. We talk about water a lot in these, um, in these consecutive Sundays. And we notice that we read from the Gospel of St. John in chapter 9 in its entirety. And it's also read on the sixth and final Sunday of Great Lent, fun fact, which we call the Baptism Sunday. And we see today that our Lord creates new, new eyes for this man, eyes of the heart and spirit to get to see and to know and to interact the love, with the love of God. And we hear about a blind man that the Lord was walking past along with his disciples. And an interesting question came up. It was put to our Lord Jesus Christ. The disciples asked, Rabbi, teacher, who sinned? This man or his parents that he was born blind? It's a really fascinating question. When bad things happen in our lives, or when we see tragedies, oftentimes we're inclined to think that someone must have done something wrong to deserve the bad thing that had happened to them. When something bad happens, we often assume that God caused it to happen in order to punish the person or that group. Oftentimes, we see that's not the case at all. Oftentimes, we see that with the disciples, when they ask the question, it's, it's, it's part of our nature to ask that type of question. And we see that it's okay to ask questions. You should feel comfortable asking questions, but you should also be careful about assuming answers. When the disciples want to know if and why God punished this man with the blindness, I found that this is often the way that people deal with troubles and difficult circumstances of life. They, they say things like, I'm not sure what I've done to deserve this. But the remarkable answer that we see in the lives of the saints and in the words of our Lord Jesus Christ is that sometimes these things happen in order for God to show his marvelous works through them. The disciples could see a man who was born without eyes, but they could not see past that. For them, the only reality was the man's blindness. And that was the end of the story. But for our Lord Jesus Christ, what appears to be an end may just be the beginning of the story. And we see this in his own life. If you were an observer to the events that happened on that one terrible Friday in Jerusalem around the year 33, you would think that the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross as a common criminal was the end of the story. Indeed, that's what a lot of the disciples thought even. But for the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, what appears to be the end can in actuality be the beginning or the start of a new story. We know this story. We're living this story. What did I do to deserve this? A common question that we all ask when things don't go our way. What did I do to deserve this? They saw a man blind from birth, and said, Who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Is it because of sin that we suffer? To be sure, there is a lot of sin in this world, a lot of it, a lot. And human sin produces a lot of human heartache. People who deliberately break the divine laws and and commands, yes, they suffer consequences of their sin. There is a consequence of the sin. And in those cases, they have to put blame where it belongs. Not on God, but on themselves. It's a me problem. Sometimes, other innocents suffer because of the consequences of my sin. A good example is that John the Baptist, who was imprisoned for calling out the Jewish king Herod's adulterous affair 
with Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, if I got that right. Sin is not the explanation for every heartache and tragedy, though. Every pain cannot be laid at the door of a particular sin. That's not how it works. <coughs> Suffering does not always have a one-to-one -one relationship with sin. How do we know this? Well, we look at how our Lord answers the question of the disciples in today's gospel. Our Lord said, he answered in verse 3, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. Father Anthony Conarius, in his book, Message of the Sunday Gospels, um, he says that because a person climbs out of an auto accident with the least injuries does not mean that he was the least sinful person in the car. The parents of a physically or mentally challenged child are not somehow more sinful than the parents of a perfectly healthy child. It's not the case. To think that my suffering can in any way atone for my sins is to make a mockery of the sufferings and the death of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. Why? Because no amount of human suffering could possibly balance the ledger of human sin. That is why God sent his only begotten son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to save the world. His suffering and his death atoned for all of human sin. All of the suffering, all of the death in the world for everyone who has ever lived. In the Psalms, in Psalm 103, King David writes, He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. Our sins were already punished and forgiven in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. So God does not go around punishing us again and again and again. There might be a, a chastisement here and there. And that's okay. That's a blessing. But he doesn't, there's no cold-blooded God out there you know, trying to punish us for the things that we've done. It's not how it works. No, there's a God of love and grace. But there is chastisement. This is a reminder that when we are tempted to say, what did I do to deserve this? I want you guys to think about it in a different way. I want to challenge our thinking. And this is a, an example that I received that we got from, a, from one of the Eastern Fathers, this challenge of the way of thinking. He says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. What did I do to deserve that? What an eye has not seen, nor an ear heard, nor has, has it ever entered the heart of man, the things of God has prepared for the things who love him, for those who love him. What did I do to deserve this? And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. What did I do to deserve that? Beloved, we are God's children now. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when we that when he appears, we shall be like him, for he for we shall see him as he is. What did I do to deserve this? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also. What did I do to deserve this? Cast all your anxieties upon him, for he cares about you. What did I do to deserve this? Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. What did I do to deserve this? Christ is risen from the dead. By death he has trampled down death, and to those in the tombs he has granted life. What did I do to deserve this? 
our Lord tells us, it was not that this man had sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be made manifest in him. This should give us hope. You may be going through a difficult circumstance in your life. But that does not mean that God is punishing you. St. John tells us that God is love. God is not going around looking to cause harm to others. He is love. He seeks us in order to love us, to do good for us. The reason why God might allow tough situations in our lives is to show us his works through those events. He is able to change us and to help us and to change our situations. He is able to take that situation that looks hopeless and add a new chapter to it, a new beginning. God may use your situation of your life to strengthen your faith and to glorify his name. The man who was born blind did not know that God had allowed all of this to occur so that it might benefit him and it might benefit those who would see it. With this miracle, the Lord could not only bring sight to one man, but he could bring spiritual sight to many, many more. After all, the prophet Isaiah said, and he foretold this, he said, the long-awaited Messiah would bring sight to the blind. And this is a very dramatic possible healing. The man born without eyes is healed by Christ and returns with eyes and he can see. Even more than this, the man now has spiritual vision, which is much more important. He has knowledge of the identity of Christ and he sees the truth. What a blessing that he received. Can you imagine his joy? He had gone his whole life without ever seeing a single thing. And yet now he could see much more than that because he could see Christ for who he is, the Son of God. He receives full sight when he could see, and he could see something that the Pharisees could not. And they don't believe that such a miracle is a possible, and they could not believe that our Lord Jesus Christ could have done it. So who's really blind? So to conclude some thoughts. The actuality is the Pharisees are blind to what God is doing in their midst. Even their reading of scripture is uninformed and darkened. They claim to be students of Moses, but what did the Lord himself say? He said, you search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life, but these are they which spoke of me. It is the very words of Moses and the rest of the prophets that should have prepared the Pharisees for the Lord. But they were confused. They were blinded by these acts of love. They tried to constrain the love of God and force it to act within their predetermined boundaries. They couldn't understand that a miracle being performed happened on a Sabbath day. But who are we to enforce the rules on God himself? Who are we to limit God's love? As Christians, we have to be careful not to limit what God can do in our lives and in the lives of others. We can have an abundant faith, abundant hope, abundant love, and we can believe that God is capable of doing anything at any time because he is a God without limits. We put the limits on him. He makes what is impossible, possible. When you truly, truly believe in this, you'll be like the man in today's gospel and receive full sight. That is sight that and vision that can never be taken away from you. I pray that God can give us this ability to see clearly this light of the world. So next time, 
something does not go the way that we wanted it to go, or something truly negative or tragic is happening in our lives, before we say, what did I do to deserve this? We should look at and remember the icon of the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ, in which his arms are spread out in an act of love towards us. Look at it and think for a moment, what did I do to deserve that? And glory be to God forever. Amen. Blessed are the